Good morning. This is Pastor Michael Rode of Glory Bound Baptist Church in Kings Mountain, North Carolina. Our church address is 407 Dixon School Road, again, Kings Mountain, North Carolina. Uh, we're located right off of Interstate 85, exit number 5, uh, directly across the street from the Kings Mountain Truck Plaza. Uh, so we'd like to encourage you to come and be with us here uh, at Glory Bound Baptist Church. We're a uh, independent, fundamental, Bible-believing Baptist church stand upon the King James Bible uh, as God's Word, His inerrant, infallible, inspired Word. Amen? And uh, so that's what we stand upon here. We're independent, uh, fundamental, Bible-believing Baptist, and um, we stand upon the King James Bible. We love the King James Bible and believe it to be God's Word for English-speaking people. And uh, so I'd like to encourage you to come and visit with us. Our service times, we have Sunday school at 10 a.m., our Sunday morning service at 11 a.m., Sunday evening at 6 p.m., and then uh, on Wednesday nights, we have our prayer meeting and Bible study, uh, and that starts at 7 p.m. And uh, so we'd like to encourage you to come and be with us uh, here at Glory Bound Baptist Church. If you're in the area uh, and you're looking for a church and you don't have a home church, uh, we'd like to encourage you to come and visit with us here. Uh, if you... Uh, uh, if you're just passing through the area, if you're if you're camping uh, in one of the various uh, campgrounds we have in the area, uh, we'd like for you to come and visit with us. If you're a truck driver passing through the area, uh, we have a truckers ministry here, uh, and all the truck drivers are welcome here. We have several uh, truck drivers from around the country uh, that uh, that they make their stop here when they're in the area uh, to come to church with us, and uh, we really we really love that. We're really excited about that. And uh, we have the truck uh, have a truck stop right across the street from our church, uh, so there's plenty of parking there, plenty of parking here uh, in our our church parking lot. Uh, it's real convenient for truck drivers uh, to come to our church uh, and have church service with us. Uh, many of our truck drivers that are on the road, a lot of them are Christians, uh, and they they're away from home sometimes on Sundays and Wednesdays, and and um, and not able to make it to their home churches and. Uh, and then they're not sure of uh, of any good churches in the you know in the areas that they're traveling to. Well, here right here in the Kings Mountain area, right outside of Charlotte, uh, right up uh, right above uh, Gaffney, uh, is Glory Bound Baptist Church. And, and right in this area, there's several truck stops, uh, and it's real convenient here at our church. There's a truck stop across the street, a diesel shop behind our church, uh, a CB shop beside our church, and then right down the street another diesel shop. Uh, and so. Uh, it's real convenient for the truck drivers, and we just want to let all of our truck drivers that are out there that uh, that may end up watching this video here, uh, we, we appreciate all the work that they do, and uh, we'd like to encourage you to come and visit with us here at Glory Bound Baptist Church. Our church is, uh, is open to everybody. Uh, we, we, we accept everyone here. We want everybody to come and visit with us here at Glory Bound Baptist Church. Everyone is welcome here uh, at Glory Bound Baptist Church. All right, now I want to get right into the Word of God here today and uh, preach a message here uh, that I preached uh, for on a Sunday morning service, uh, I guess about a month and a half, two months ago. Uh, and unfortunately, we didn't get it recorded on that Sunday morning. We always record uh, our, our Sunday morning services and post it uh, up on YouTube, uh, on our YouTube channel. Uh, and for some reason, this just didn't get recorded that Sunday morning. And so I want to share this with you here today, hoping it'll be a help and a blessing to you. I want to read from the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter number 17 verses 14 through 21, and then I want to read uh, a little bit from Mark chapter number 4, verses 30, 31, and 32. Uh, the Bible says in Matthew chapter number 17, uh, verses 14 through 21, the Bible says, and when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and sore vexed. For oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto him, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Now I want to read uh, three verses here from the book of Mark. Mark chapter number four, verses 30 through uh, 32. The Bible says, And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? It is like a grain of mustard seed 
which when it is sown in the earth is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up and becometh greater than all herbs and shooteth out great branches so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. I want to bring a message here. If you notice in both passages of scripture, uh, Matthew chapter 17 and Mark chapter number four, uh, that it talks about faith. It mentions it's talking about faith. Uh, and it also uh, compares it to the grain of mustard seed. And so I want to bring a message entitled here today, 20 feet tall from a millimeter seed. 20 feet tall from a millimeter seed. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day and all your blessings. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you for the truths that we find in your word. Thank you, Lord, for uh, the help and the guidance that we can get from you through your word. Lord, may we read it, study it, rightly divide it, and apply it to our hearts and our lives. Uh, so that we can have a closer relationship with you and be a better witness for you, Lord God, I pray. You help us, help me here today as I preach. Give me the words to say. May this be a help and a blessing to every person uh, that hears this message, Lord, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, title of the message is 20 feet tall from a millimeter seed. How does someone have a great faith in the Lord? Uh, they have to grow one. A lot of people, they uh, they talk about how they lose their faith. They lose their faith. Well, one, my faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ. I've put my faith in the gospel, uh, his death, his burial, and his resurrection for my salvation. Uh, I cannot earn my way to heaven. And so therefore, I'm not putting faith in myself, but I put my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and in what he's already done. So I, I can't lose my faith because I'm saved. And the Bible tells me that by the Holy Ghost of God, I've been sealed unto the day of redemption. Uh, so I can't lose my faith. But let me say this. I believe this. I believe that people's faith can become weak. Uh, people's faith can become very weak. And there's various reasons uh, as to why uh, people's faith can become weak. Uh, one is they're not faithful to the things of God. They're not faithful uh, to the house of God. Uh, there's a lot of people who claim the title Christian uh, who hardly ever darken the doors uh, of the church house. Uh, the Bible clearly tells us in the book of Hebrews, uh, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Uh, we ought to assemble ourselves together. We ought to come together, uh, especially in these last days, uh, and cause, because we get... Uh, we get our, our faith strengthened. Uh, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You hear the word of God preached uh, at the house of God and your faith is strengthened. Uh, you hear the testimonies uh, of the other believers and your faith is strengthened. And so when you uh, deny yourself uh, that feeding opportunity, that chance to go to the house of God and to hear the preaching of the word of God, your faith is getting weaker and weaker and weaker. Uh, also, people's faith uh, becomes weak. Uh, when they are not faithful to read God's word, uh, we get fed. We, you know, we ought to get fed on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night when we have revival uh, and, and things like that at our church. Uh, but we also ought to be feeding ourselves uh, every day from the word of God. I believe also people's faith become weak. Uh, becomes weak when they not when they're not faithful uh, to go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, I believe that if there's definitely one thing for sure uh, that's lacking in Christians' lives, it's their prayer life. Many Christians, the only time that they pray, uh, and if they pray at all, uh, is when they uh, uh, right before they're uh, to eat a meal uh, or right before they go to bed at night. And a lot of times, whether we want to admit it or not, a lot of times. Uh, it's almost the same prayer. We recite the same prayer uh, basically at the meal times and at bedtime. Uh, most Christians do. And so it's not a very active prayer life. If you're not involved with the one who can strengthen your faith and build your faith, whether at his house or in his word or speaking to him in prayer, uh, you need to be doing all of these things, being a soul winner. Uh, if you're not going out and winning souls and sharing the gospel and seeing others come to know Christ as their Savior and begin a faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're not doing these things, then your faith is going to get weaker and weaker and weaker. And when your faith becomes weak, uh, then you begin not to trust God with things. And then uh, it seems like that you don't have any victories in your life, but all you have is a life full of defeat. And uh, that's not the kind of life that Jesus Christ wants us to live. Now, I'm not going to preach a prosperity gospel here. I believe that sometimes uh, God allows us to go through things to strengthen our faith, to drive us to our knees, to get us in his word, to get us in his house. I believe God allows things to come our way to strengthen us and to make us trust him more. 
Uh, but also, I'm not naive either. I'm not ignorant. I know that a lot of people uh, go through things that uh, go through a lot of uh, things in their life too because they bring it on themselves. So let's not be uh, be ignorant here uh, and say, "Well, it's just God putting me to the test." Sometimes that is the case, but I believe in most Christians' lives, the reason why you go through the things you go through <clears throat> is because. Uh, there's something lacking in your life, something lacking in your spiritual life, something lacking in your relationship with the Lord. But on us at the same time, I don't want to say uh, that that's the case in every situation. We look at Job in the Bible. The Bible says he was a righteous and upright man. He had a close relationship with the Lord. The Bible says he walked with the Lord. Uh, he's probably the most righteous man in his day and time. Uh, and yet there's many trials and tribulations that came his way. Uh, but you notice that through all of that, he kept his faith in the Lord. His faith even became stronger. And in the end, God blessed him with more in the end than what he had in the beginning. Uh, and so there, we need uh, to go through some trials. We need to go through some times of testing because it does build our faith. It builds our character. It builds our, our, our trust in the Lord more. Uh, but we've got to make sure that when we're going through these things, that we're spending time in God's word. We're spending time in God's house. We're spending time on our knees in prayer. We're spending time trying to make a difference in the lives of others because it doesn't matter what you're going through. There's somebody else out there who has it worse than you. And, uh, and so, uh, here we, they have this passage of scripture from the book of Matthew and the book of Mark, uh, that talks about our faith, uh, and it talks about, uh, compares it to a mustard seed. Uh, so 20 feet tall from a millimeter seed. How does someone have a great faith in the Lord? Uh, they have to grow one. Uh, we're not saved by works. Thank God for that. We're saved by God's grace. By, by, it's by grace alone, through faith alone, in Jesus Christ alone. But once we have that faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, how does it grow? Well, one has to grow it. Uh, we have to, to, that's where we have to be faithful to the things of God and do what God has commanded us to do. And so I want to share about five, six things here with you today uh, that I believe is kind of a step-by-step -step process uh, that will help us uh, grow up a strong faith in the Lord. And so that when, when whatever, uh, uh, whatever's thrown our way, whatever comes our way, uh, we'll be able to trust the Lord through it all. Uh, and so I want to share this with you here today. How does one, uh, how does someone have a great faith in the Lord? They have to grow one. Number one, they have to start with the tiny seeds. Uh, you have to trust God with the small things in your life and watch him work and bless. Um, when we trust Christ as our Savior, uh, we, we have that little seed of faith already uh, there. But now we can take that seed. Uh, it's just like anybody that plants a garden. Uh, you, can, you can go and you can get the seeds. But if you don't take those little seeds and you don't plant them, then those seeds are going to do no good. They're not going to grow. Nothing's going to happen. There's going to be no fruit produced, no vegetables produced, no flour uh, that will come forth. There'll be nothing that'll happen. That seed will just sit there uh, and it'll dry up. And, and, and become dust. And so one has to start with the tiny seeds. That's the reason why uh, I believe in this. My pastor, Wayne Reese, uh, I've heard him say this my entire life uh, as, as, as I was growing up as a kid and as a teenager and, a, and as a young adult, uh, I'd heard him say all my life, you have to cook what you catch. I believe that uh, it's our responsibility as Christians, if we win folks to the Lord, uh, to stay with them uh, and to encourage them to come to church and get rooted into the house of God and get rooted in God's word uh, so that they can begin to grow in the faith. We need to do the same thing. Once we've trusted Christ as our Savior, we put our faith and our trust in the gospel for salvation, uh, then we need to take that little seed and we need to plant it down in God's word, in God's house, in the things of God so that it can begin to grow. Uh, there's a lot of people uh, that I have met uh, over the years and, and some that I have personally won to the Lord over the years uh, that trusted Christ as their Savior or said that they trusted Christ as their Savior, uh, but they never got into church. They never got rooted into the house of God uh, and uh, and they never, uh, there was not a change in their life. And so in my opinion, um, and, and I, in my opinion, I try to draw it from the word of God. Uh, I, I begin to really doubt whether they truly got saved or not because I believe that there'll be a change there. I believe that there'll be a desire uh, to change, to live a different life, to live a life pleasing unto the Lord. And uh, But I believe that there are some who trust Christ as their Savior 
and they just don't have anybody. They don't have that soul winner there to encourage them to get into God's house. I believe that there's some uh, Christian soul winners that'll go out door to door and thank God. Uh, there's not many nowadays, but thank God that there's some that are willing to go out uh, and go door to door, knocking on doors. Acts chapter 20, verse 20, 2020 vision. Um, I'm glad that there's still some that'll go out and knock on doors and go door to door. But I believe that there are some of those that as they go out and knock door to door and they share the gospel and they, they may win somebody to the Lord right there in the doorstep. They don't follow back up. They don't go back the next week and try to encourage that person to come to church. They don't uh, try to reach out to them through phone calls or text messages or or sending them a letter or or all the various ways that we have nowadays to stay in contact with folks. Um, you have to cook what you catch. And so number one, in order to be 20 feet tall from a millimeter seed, you have to start with the tiny seeds. Trust God with small things in your life and watch him work and bless. You know, if we can trust the Lord Jesus Christ to save our souls and to wash our sins away, then why can't we not trust him with the small things in our lives? Why can't we trust him uh, with our bills? Why can't we trust him uh, with our when we get a cold? Why, why is it the first thing that we do when we get a cold is we run to the drugstore and get some cough medicine and get some allergy medicines and begin to take those. And the very last thing that we do when the sickness goes on for three, four, five, six days is we pray and we say, Lord, please help me. Please help me get over the sickness. Why is that not the first thing that we do? I'm not against medicine. I believe that God has given men uh, and women the knowledge uh, to be able to produce uh, good med med uh, good medication to help us uh, to be able to, to get better. Uh, but why why do we not go to God in prayer first over something? Why is it that we, as uh, as human beings, as, as men and women, why is it that we seek other options and seek other ways to get help with sickness or get help uh, when we're when we're uh, maybe a little depressed and discouraged and down? Why is it that we seek everything else? And we make God the last option. The Lord Jesus Christ ought to be our very first option. So number one, start with the tiny seeds. Trust God with the small things in your life and watch him work and bless. And the more that you see God work and bless and move in your life and answer those prayers and what we consider the small things, there's nothing too small for God, by the way. Nothing too big and nothing too small. Take everything uh, to the Lord in prayer. But if we trust him with what we consider these small things in our lives and we see him begin to work and answer those prayers, that strengthens our faith and our faith begins to grow. So number one, you have to start with the tiny seeds. Number two, you need to plant the tiny seeds in the wintertime. Uh, there was uh, something as I was studying about the uh, the mustard seed uh, and the mustard tree, the mustard plant. Uh Wanted to know some more information about it because there are, uh, you have to plant seeds at different times. Not everything, uh, is planted in the springtime. Not everything's planted, uh, in the fall. You have to plant, uh, certain things, certain seeds at certain times. And the thing that I come across, uh, about the mustard seed is that you plant the seeds in the winter time. You plant the seeds in the winter time. Well, I got to thinking about the winter. And when you think about winter, uh, in the word of God, uh, winter is, is symbolic. It's a picture of a time of testing and trials. I thought that to be wonderful that God used the mustard seed uh, as an example in his word uh, as our small faith and that the mustard seed has to be planted in the winter time. And you know, the winter time is symbolic. It's a picture of time of testing and trials. You know what a lot of people do when they go through a time of testing and trials? They t a lot of people completely turn their backs on God. And they try it their way. They run to man and man's options for help. But God wants us to take that, that, take our faith. And in the midst of our storms and our trials and our tribulations, in the midst of our winter, when he wants us to plant those seeds down in him, in his word, in his house, in prayer, in the things of God. And so that he can begin uh, to grow that faith. So we plant those tiny seeds uh, in the, in the winter time, in the time of testing and trials. Uh, also, uh, it said that we uh, said there when it comes to planting the mustard seed, not only do you plant it uh, in the winter time, uh, but you also plant it uh, in the fertile, uh, fertile and moist soils. Now, not too moist, uh, but it did say there to plant it in the fertile and moist soil. And so I got to thinking about that. Uh, Luke chapter number eight, verse 15 says, but that uh, on the good ground are they which uh, in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit 
with patience. Notice there it says that good ground. That's that fertile and moist ground. I think about the Lord Jesus Christ being being uh, being the living water uh, springing up in us, and we take that good word and, and and plant that seed in the good ground. Thank God that in the midst of uh, of our winter time, in the midst of times of uh, of testing and trials and tribulations, in the midst of our winter, we can take that faith and plant it deep down in God's word, and the Lord Jesus Christ will show up in the midst of our storm, in the midst of our trial, in the midst of the tribulation, in the hard times of life. The Lord. Lord Jesus Christ will be there. He said that he would never leave us nor forsake us. He's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Cast all your care upon him for he careth for you. I'm glad that we've got an advocate with the Father. I'm glad that we've got a mediator, the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm glad that we've got the high priest that's on our side and in the midst of our winter time, in the midst of our times of, uh, of testing and trials and tribulation, if we take our faith and we plant it and root it down in the word of God and in the house of God and get on our knees in prayer. I'm glad to know that Jesus Christ will show up in the midst of that and give you strength and give you what you need to be able to make it through the tribulation, to make it through the trials and the storms of life. See, a lot of folks, they want to ask and pray for God to deliver them from the situation. But I believe a lot of times we just need to pray for God to give us what we need to be able to make it through the situation because making it through the situation and trusting in the Lord as you do that, strengthens your faith. If you just ask God to deliver you from the situation, there's nothing really happening to strengthen your faith. But if you're in the midst of the storm, cry out and ask God to help you and give you what you need to be able to make it through the storm and it'll strengthen your faith. So number one, number one, you start with the tiny seeds. Number two, you plant the tiny seeds in the wintertime in the fertile and moist soil. Number three, you have to feed in water the planted seeds. You have to feed and water the planted seeds. Uh, if you take seeds and you plant them in, and even if you plant them in good, fertile, moist ground, you know what? Eventually that moist soil could dry up. And if you don't feed the uh, the seeds, if you don't water the seeds, then they may not grow. And if they do grow, they're gonna their growth will be stunted. I think about feeding and watering uh, the planted seeds. I, I, I compare that to the praying and the fasting uh, that's mentioned here uh, in Matthew chapter number 17, verse 21. Uh, if you notice, remember there in the passage of scripture, uh, there was a, 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 a child, a young man uh, that was that uh, says here in verse 15, he was lunatic and sore vexed. Uh, he was demon possessed. He was devil possessed. And this man brought his son to the disciples and the disciples couldn't cast him out. So they bring him to Jesus. Jesus cast the devil out. Uh, and then the disciples come to him and ask him, well, why wasn't we able to do this? And Jesus tells him in verse 21, Matthew 17, 21, how be it this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. I think that we need to feed and water our seeds. I think that we need to uh, take those little seeds and we need to take those seeds and plant them down in the winter time. We need to plant them uh, in the midst of our, our testing and our trials. We need to plant them down in the word of God. And while we've got them planted in the word of God, we need to feed them and we need to water them. We need to spend time on our knees in prayer while we're reading God's word. Meditate upon his word. Be faithful to spend time. Get in your prayer closet. A lot of people have no idea uh, what a prayer closet is. Let me say this. I, I'd heard this uh, from uh, from uh, Dr. Tom Williams, uh, and I was in one of his uh, uh, classes about prayer, uh, one of his seminars, one of his meetings he was holding about prayer. And I remember one of the sayings that he, that he shared with us, and it stuck with me. Uh, was was this. He said, uh, the queers didn't start coming out of their closets until the Christian quit going into theirs. You know, there, we need to find a place that we can get alone with God and spend time with God on our knees praying and crying out to him. I think that we ought to pray every single day. I don't think that we pray enough. You know, the Bible talks about uh, about tithing and 10%. And a lot of times we put that, uh, a lot of times we think about automatically, we think about money. But what if uh, we were supposed to give 10% of our time to the Lord? How much, do you, how much time do you spend reading your Bible? How much time do you spend praying? How much time do you spend in the house of God? It, does it even come close to 10%? Uh, of your of your day? Does it come, come close to 10% of your week? Everybody with me here? We need to be faithful to these things. We need to plant those tiny seeds in the winter time in the fertile and moist soil. And then we need to feed and water those plants. 
Verse 21, Matthew 17, 21, Jesus said, how be it this kind, talking about this, this strong, mighty faith, how be it this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. We need to be faithful to prayer and fasting. We need to be faithful to the things that God teaches us in his word. If we're not having an active prayer life and we don't take time to fast over some things that are important in our lives, then how do we expect that our faith, how do we expect our faith to grow? So to be 20 feet tall from a millimeter seed, number one, you have to start with the tiny seeds. Number two, you need to plant the tiny seeds in the winter time. Number three, you need to feed and water the planted seeds. Hey, I, I think it's very important uh, to do these things. Number four, the tiny seeds begin to sprout. When you do this, when you start with the seeds, the tiny seeds, and you plant the tiny seeds in the winter time in the fertile and moist soil, and you feed and you water these seeds, these planted seeds, then the tiny seed, uh, tiny seeds begin to sprout. Finally, this means here, finally, you truly begin to realize nothing is impossible with God. Luke chapter number one, verse 37 says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. Hey, when you when you trust God with the, some of the small things, we consider small things in your life, and you trust him with that, and you see you begin to see him move and work and bless in your life, and you take those seeds, those tiny victories there, and you plant those down in the winter time, because the winter time is a coming, I promise you. If you're not in the trials and the storms of life right now, there will be a time that you will, and you'll need to take those, those tiny seeds, those tiny victories that God has given you, and plant those down in the midst of your winter time and then you'll need to feed and water it and when you do that you'll begin to see that faith sprout those tiny seeds begin to sprout that means you finally truly begin to realize nothing is impossible with God I'm glad that there's nothing impossible with my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ hey if he is able to die on the cross for my sins and shed his life's blood for me and be buried and raised again and walk this earth for 40 days and ascend up to heaven on high and there he's preparing a mansion for me and for you and gives us the promise that he's going to come back again and receive us unto himself hey if the Lord Jesus Christ can do this then there's nothing impossible with him if he can walk on the water there's nothing impossible with him if he is able to wash the sin out of you and me. There's nothing impossible with him. If he could speak to the seas, peace, be still. There's nothing impossible with him. If he could speak everything that we see around us into existence, then there's nothing impossible with him. And so whatever situation you find yourself in, no matter what the circumstances are, no matter how gloom, uh, gloomy and doomy it may seem, no matter how dark the situation is, no matter if it seems like that everybody's turned their back on you, nothing is impossible with God. So you start with the tiny seeds and you plant the tiny seeds in the winter time in the first and uh, uh, the, the fertile and moist soil. You feed and water the planted seeds uh, with prayer and fasting. Uh, and then the tiny seeds, you begin to see them sprout and you begin to realize, hey, there's really nothing impossible with God. And when you get to that point, it begins to sprout and begins to grow. Once it starts sprouting up out of the ground, that mustard seed it develops a huge root system. That's very important that the mustard seed, that the mustard plant and any plant has a huge, uh, huge, uh, greatly developed root system. I love this here. A mustard plant develops a 20 foot deep tap root, a tap root. Uh, a root that, that grows straight down into the ground, 20 feet straight down into the ground. It, it's a tap root. And what that means is it taps in to water that's underground. What that means for the mustard plant, because you got to realize in the area of the world that it, that it traditionally grows in, sometimes it rains and sometimes it don't. And so it has to have another source. It has to be tapped in uh, to a source, a deep source. A uh, mustard plant develops a 20-foot deep tap root. Things can get dry all around it, but it's tapped down deep into a source of water that continuously feeds it. Hey, we need to be rooted in and tapped into the Lord Jesus Christ. See, a lot of Christians, they 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 get their faith and they 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 have their spirituality based upon the church service. 
They have they 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 feel like that they have to run uh, uh, and, and be in a revival every single night of their life, and there's nothing wrong with that. Hey, if you if there's a good Bible believing church around that has a revival and you're able to get to it, by all means go and get in that revival and get fed the Word of God. But a lot of people they're relying on songs and they're relying on the preacher and they're relying on the revival meeting and they're re they're relying uh, on the evangelist and they're relying on these things uh, for their source of strength, their source of growth, their source of spirituality. But I'm going to tell you right now, there's not always going to be a good revival meeting going on. There may not always be a, a song that you can listen to that'll help encourage you. Hey, there's going to be those times where it doesn't seem like that anything and anybody else can help you. And in those times when you feel dry and thirsty is when you need to be tapped down deep in the Lord Jesus Christ and draw close to him. Hey, he said, if you draw nigh unto him, he'll draw nigh unto you. We need to be tapped into the Lord Jesus Christ as our source of strength and encouragement. And when it seems like the church is dry and it seems like that everybody else around you is spiritually dry, you need to be tapped into the Lord Jesus Christ and draw your strength from him. Amen. We need to be continuously fed God's word. We need to be uh, continuously strengthened by the Lord Jesus Christ. And the only way that that's going to happen is to be tapped down deep into the main source of water and the living water, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter number 17, verses seven and eight, blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and it spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when he cometh, but her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful uh, in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. I'm telling you right now, you know what? You could be surrounded by a bunch of people who are spiritually dry and dead. And in the midst of that dryness, spiritual dryness uh, and spiritual drought that you're in, you know what? You can still be green and you can still be growing and still be strong because you're tapped in to the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey folks, I'm telling you right now, we're living in the Laodicean church age. At the end part of the Laodicean church age, we're in that great falling away uh, that the Bible talks about. Uh, I believe in 2 Thessalonians, we're in that age of the great falling away. We're living in that age of lukewarm Christianity. And, it's, and we may have a church on every corner, but not every church is tapped into the uh, tapped down deep into that source of living water, the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a lot of churches and a lot of church folks and a lot of preachers and a lot of pastors and a lot of evangelists uh, that are just going through the motions and they're not tapped into the Lord Jesus Christ. They're not tapped into his word. They're not tapped into him and they're just going through the motions and everybody, it seems like nowadays, there's so many people that's just spiritually dry and dead. But I'm glad that there's still some churches out there that's tapped down deep into Jesus Christ. And when everybody else is dry and dead, they're still going the old time way, still proclaiming the word of God, still sharing the gospel, and still seeing God do some great and mighty things. Hey, I'm glad that I'm tapped down deep in Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm glad that I'm, I'm like a tree that's planted by the rivers of waters. I'm glad that I've got Jesus Christ in my life and I'm glad that I can tap into him and I'm glad that I can draw from him when it seems like everything else is dry. I'm glad that I can draw from him. The Bible says in the book of Colossians, Colossians chapter number two, verses six and seven, it says, as ye 